everybody, it's Helping Hands here, and in this video I'll be going over the campaigns as well as the difference between the Raid and Conquest modes in Men of War 2. The Story Campaign features six missions from the USSR, USA and Germany, which are played in a linear fashion. Follow the footsteps of heroes and their destinies in this campaign mode. The Historical Campaign focuses on large-scale operations and features seven missions for both the USSR and the USA. There are also six bonus missions which feature all factions. For both Raid and Conquest modes, you can choose to play on the Eastern Front as the USSR or choose to play as the Germans either on the Eastern or Western Front. And finally, the USA on the Western Front. Let's jump into Conquest to start with. Conquest is a large dynamic campaign. Both the player and the AI have one move per turn. So getting victory in this mode, you've got to take your opponent's HQ, which is at the bottom of this map. Players move their battalions across the crucial strategic battle map points using their mouse cursor by clicking and dragging a battalion. You can also unlock more battalions if you complete additional objectives over here. If you can manage to complete this support and fire objective by unlocking the BM-13 in the technology tree, you will then be able to unlock the second artillery division as along with these anti-tank guns. And if you'd like more information about this specific game mode, click the rules button here. So in this instance, I've moved all three of my starting battalions down to the first point, which is the farmland. And as you can see, all three are available to choose from, but I can only choose one. You can also change the difficulty over here. If I wish to edit one of my battalions, I would click it and then I would click the edit regiment button. And like before in battalions, this is where you would just change your units and swap units around as you see fit. Echelon 1 has a maximum of 300 population cap, Echelon 2 400, and Echelon 3 500. Technology is unlocked as you progress through this campaign. You start with 250 star points and 1,000 standard kind of manpower points. You choose which points to unlock. So let's say we wanted to upgrade to the PTRS. I would click on lock over here and that would cost me um, 210 of my experience. And then I would have 40 left. So let's go do that. We've now unlocked it. You can also click on show full version, which shows you the whole tech tree of all the units that you can potentially unlock later on down in the campaign. So as we can see here, we have now unlocked the armor ETRS guys. So now we would want to go back to the map, back to the farmland, and then we would probably want to choose our infantry division and then edit the regiment. Here is the PTR. PTRD squad, and now we should be able to see the PTRS squad which we've unlocked over here. There we go. And now I'd want to probably maybe swap those guys out since this is the better version and throw them over there. So what I'll do is I'll do that, swap them over. And uh, I thought, well, first I would need to buy some units. So that's what we'll do is we'll buy, let's say, how many can we get over here generally? We'll buy one to start with. Now I can drag him over. I can actually have 16, so now I know I can buy an extra 15 guys to fill that slot up. And it's cost me 8 of this manpower resource to buy them. So let's do that. So we're going to go, and you can just type the number in as well. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so we need what, 15 more. Recruit them. And now we can drag the rest over there. Or I can just click that button, and then I can get them all up there. Like so, and we've got all the uh, extra units, the PTRS squad. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our first infantry division and we're going to start the game. You can also see what the type of mission we're up. It's going to be positions capture. So here we go. Let's start the mission. Here we can see we start with some AI units. Very similar to the standard battalions game mode with the same kind of logistics railway system where you can only call a couple of units in at a time and then it will be on a cool down before you can call some more in. You can see our population cap is there, so we're 6 out of 75 and we can only call in stuff in the first echelon whereas the second and third echelon is only unlocked later on during the mission. And once I've captured the A point and the G point, uh, the mission will be over. So there we have it, we have won the mission. Get some match stats, see how many kills we had for our infantry and tanks and things like that, which is pretty cool. Personal score, breakdown of everything there, and rewards. So we can see from winning that mission, we gained 36 uh, experience points, 3 XP, 720 standard XP, and Soviet rubles, got manpower kind of thing, just uh, shy of 4,000. So in Men of War 2, guys, I just want to explain the difference between the two experience types. So in this 
campaign session, I have 265 free experience. So that means I can combine that together with the current experience of the unit that has uh, gained experience during a mission. So here we have the F-22. This unit during submissions has gained about, uh, was it 554 or 64 uh, experience? And then I can then click on the next thing and then unlock the um, the next uh the next gun which is going to be the ziz 3 unfortunately here the um the ziz gun costs 574 so i actually need to use 10 more of my free xp to then uh, to unlock that that's why the, the free xp is pretty good because i can just use that in conjunction with lots of other units to help make the difference and you and the only way to level up one unit to the next is to try and play with that you that previous unit uh, and get them you know get them some kills you know during missions so that they grind some experience to be able to lock the next thing all right, now we've taken the farm now. We can see it's now turned blue in our color. And now it's the enemy's turn where we have to defend. And they're going to be coming from this area to push us over here. We can't move any more of my regiments. Because we moved them all once this turn. So now it's a defense battle where I have to hold the farmland against an incoming enemy um, attack. So here we are now loading into the defensive mission. So here we have uh, lots of... Some, looks like we've got some free units to, to, to recruit here. Some machine guns, some... Uh, anti-aircraft guns, some anti-tank guns as well. So we probably want to call on our re rifleman recruits, probably loads of those guys real quick so we can man them. And uh, we want to try and, and then we can choose on the map where we want to defend. We can try and defend the E point or the A point. And it also looks like we get gi uh, are given some free kind of AI units that will just stay here and try and hold the point on their own as well, which is quite nice. Uh, like we've got a fuel truck as well here, a, a Jeep that we can maybe crew. Uh, a gas that maybe can get us a few of our forces uh, forward quicker. So what we'll do is we'll maybe grab this uh, the Dishka here with these two guys. We'll, uh, maybe get on this. Start moving these guys up and put them in good defensive positions. There we go, we've won the mission. All there we had to do was hold out on those points until we reached 2,500 victory points and then the game uh, was over as we won. And once again we have our breakdown of statistics, personal scores and rewards. There we go. Lots of rubles, lots of experience. Fantastic. Okay, now it's my turn again, and then I can choose to attack a different territory, and we also can go for some more technology. And what we'll do is we'll send maybe the tank division down to the Winter March, and then we'll send maybe our artillery division down to Kursk Fields. But you can see here, when I try and tank one division off to attack another point, it cancels the other, so you can only attack once per turn. So in this next clip, guys, I'm giving you another demonstration of how you unlock another battalion and how you use it. So if I wanted to unlock another battalion, what I would need to do is complete a certain requirement in my objectives. And this, for this objective, I will go down to unlock the 52K here. So I've got to research that and I'll unlock the 7th Artillery Division. To do that, we go Technology and then we'll unlock the 52K. It can also be found if I go Show Fall. There's a 61K to the 52. And then we're going to unlock that. There we go, and then bang, I have now completed that task, and we now have that regiment. There we go, 7th Artillery Division unlocked. Now, I go back to uh, the map, and we should see that division in our reserves. There we go. And now I can say, let's. Th I, then I can then throw this division wherever I want. So I can throw them down over here to defend the frontier, for instance, if I wanted to. Or I could throw them... I think you can only throw them in friendly territory, though, so... That would be smart to throw them over here. Now I'm going to see what happens when the enemy attack this without me doing sending a unit over there. So I could send a reserve over there. I, know, I could have done it last turn, but this is what happens. So I have to skip battle here. So this is where the enemy is coming in to attack the frontier. And I'm going to end, uh, skip the turn. And there we go. The enemy were able to take that point without a contest. And that's why it's so important to keep a battalion at each point where the enemy can attack into so that you can actually defend that point. Right, so what I could do now from the reserves, so we sent the infantry squad to reserve earlier. I can now throw it over to here. And I can throw, for instance, the artillery division to here. They'll become available next turn. So if the enemy decide to attack next turn to here, I could choose between one of these two battalions on both occasions to defend from. But here I could then take this uh, artillery division and re push over here to retake that. Though I don't think I can't, I can't attack twice in one turn. As you can see here, it cancelled that one out there when I try to push, push this one in here. So there you guys go. Hopefully it gives you an idea of what you need to do uh, on the campaign map for Conquest. Also, at any point during a campaign, you could choose to restart it or you could load a previous session. And if you go to battles here, you can also see your past 
uh, matches in this game mode and you can watch the replay. Now, moving on to raid mode. Raid mode is essentially similar to what one would call a dynamic skirmish. Each restart or reset generates a series of 16 maps and missions that the player can take on at any difficulty. Western and Eastern front maps with all three nations are playable here. It features several types of modes with different command points and tests the player and their ability to adapt quickly. In this example, I'll be playing the Americans and I'll be trying the first mission, which is coast and the skirmish type is incursion and I will be picking the tank regiment. So here looks like we've been thrown into like a 3v3 fight where we are pushing up the front line here and the enemy already start with 1400 uh, victory points, which means time is against us and we've uh, got to do very well in this kind of challenge mode. Same type of, type of battalion game play here where we have the logistics train, where we have to wait for units to come on. Um, when when the, the timer comes on, the echelons unlock and also uh, we have population gap as limit there as well. So here we go and it looks like the enemy control all the points here uh, by the looks of it and uh, so that means we've got to be very quick in taking control of all this territory to win this match. I'll just skip ahead to the victory scene and there we go we've won the mission. Get uh, rewards and experience. Looks like we've got access to resistance fires as well and now we can then choose to go down to Estate or Bazerville for the next mission and uh, once again if we wanted to change up our echelons uh, in our regiments we can do so over here we can buy some better units so let's go for instance back to the mission and let's say we want to do estate next we choose the regiment our tank regiment we'd edit it just like before and uh, we can swap some units in so this is the unit that we got for completing an objective and so we could maybe swap those recruits though with these resistance guys which might be better so we'll remove these guys out throw these guys in and uh like to buy some more of them. There we go. So we've got a whole loop group of resistance fighters as our mainline force now, which is kind of cool. And then this time with, the, with this mission, it will be a front line. So basically, each mission we'll get uh, is completely randomized. So look at we can base it if that's a front line one. Uh, we can't check what the other ones are until we've unlocked them. But it's, it's just randomized, kind of just skirmish missions with different kind of like um, objectives and twists on the standard game modes that you'll be playing. So guys, that's the end of the video and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did and want more content, check up over here and over here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the button down here. Catch you in the next video, guys. Take care and I'll see you soon.